Hey, welcome to the party, everybody. Today I want to teach you how to build my favorite build I've ever made and show you some of the ways that you can change it to suit your style or your base or your playthrough uh, and hopefully have some fun with it. So if you want to build along at home, there's going to be a list of materials running across the bottom of your screen now. And there will also be a list of the materials in the description of this video. So let's go ahead and jump into it and get started. So the first thing I always start with for this build are the wheels. So I use my silly green balloon blocks. You can use any of the silly balloons, but I like the green ones. And you're just going to make a little circle like this. Uh, we'll paint that in a minute, but we just want to start with that basic circle. Now, when I do this, I like to count out nine spaces between the edge of this wheel and the start of the next one. So I'm going to go ahead and do that there. Oh, I've ran out of balloon blocks. <laughs> I grabbed exactly as many as we needed, so we need these last four here. All right, there we go. So there's our two wheels they're gonna make up this build. And I'm gonna toss a little grass seed down to keep that grassy look there. Uh, perfect, so I'm gonna go ahead and paint these black. Uh, it's usually what I do on the wagon build is run with black wheels because I want the focus to be somewhere else on the build. So we've got our wheels down. Now we need to actually turn this into a wagon. So the first thing we'll do is go ahead and toss a couple wheel hubs in there. I like to use gem spark block because it's a really vibrant material and you can paint it to whatever color you like. Uh, and it gives a cool lighting effect at night as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put those down. We'll paint them here in a little bit. Uh, but the first thing that I want to do is start with our crystal block platform. So when I first made this build, uh, I built this as a home for the die trader. And so that's going to be the one that we're recreating today uh, is our little house for the die trader. So what I did was just run these crystal blocks all the way along here on the same block as the top of the tire. So you can see that there. We've got three blocks there off of the edge. Uh, so you want to overhang of about three blocks. Uh, and again, you can change all this stuff if you want. It, it really doesn't make any difference to me how you build these things. You can change up the materials and do everything that you want to do with them, of course. Next thing I want to do is kind of thicken up this floor a little bit and give this build a little bit more weight, a little bit more heft to its look. So I like using Boreal for this because it's a nice horizontal texture. All of like the dividing lines when you lay a bunch of Boreal out are going vertically, as you can see, rather than horizontally. Uh, or the rows are going horizontally rather than vertically. The grief couldn't have got it more wrong. That's uh, okay. Okay, let's tear this down and keep moving on with the build. So I think I'm just going to leave this one for here for right now because I want to start putting together the rest of this cart. So next thing here, we're gonna go ahead and switch over to our dynasty wood and we're gonna build not on that block. Good grief, I got no aim today. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna build on this block right here. This is the outer edge of your wheel. This is where I like to start. So we'll start with just a little three, bo three block high uh, little tower of dynasty wood there on the outside of those tires. And then what I want to do is give a little bit more height to this and add three more blocks on top. We're going to do that to both sides here. So one, two, three. Perfect. Now these are going to be where our doors end up sitting. So I'm going to go ahead and pickaxe out the bottom three blocks on this so that we have room, uh, room to pass. And we could even put the doors on right now. Why not? It'll let us. Why shouldn't we? Perfect. All right. So this house is in desperate need of some kind of roof. So let's go ahead. And again, with the Boreal wood, I'm just gonna lay a line of Boreal across the top there for the ceiling, real simple stuff here. This is your basic wooden box style, <laughs> nothing too complicated, but it doesn't look too great yet. So what I'd like to do now, let's go ahead and take our roof shingles here and start putting a roof on this thing. So the way that I do my roofs, and I'll tell you up front, I'm not great with roofs. <laughs> Anytime I see somebody building like a house with a really, really cool looking roof, I always have like, I just have to stop and kind of appreciate it because I'm so bad at putting these together. So the formula that I use for this, you start on the outside edge here and we're using our red dynasty shingles. You can use the blue ones or green ones, whatever they are uh, as well, but the red ones paint better and they give you more vibrance. So if you want a desaturated build, where there's not a lot of color in it. If you're doing like grays and browns and things like that, you might use the other shingles instead. But if you want some vibrant colors in your build, uh, like I like, I use the red ones. So we're gonna start by putting a block of the Dynasty shingles on the outer edge of each of these, and we're gonna add two more to the top of those, just like that. A little devil horns now. <laughs> uh, outside of that, we wanna basically do the same thing. We're gonna add another block, and then we're, this time we're only gonna add one block on top of it is all. 
So we end up with this sort of odd looking thing here for now. But the next bit to this is to connect the top of these and good grief, my mouse is going crazy. Uh, so we wanna connect those and we can ignore this one for now, uh, but ultimately we'll put one there. So this kind of connects it and you can kind of start to see the vibe that we're getting with the roof. Uh, but it's not thick enough yet, and this is a problem that I think a lot of newer builders have is they see something like this and they say, okay, yeah, it's my roof, you know, uh, or that's my floor or my ceiling, it's only one block thick. And we want to try to avoid that because builds that have some substantial width or height to them typically look better. Uh, so what we want to do to complete this roof is we want to start just above the space that starts this little gap here, this long gap. We're going to put one just above that in line with our doors, basically. So just trace your doors all the way up and put one block on each side. One block! <laughs> uh, so yeah, just do one block there, and then we're just going to fill all the way across this. Just like that. Perfect. Uh, now, the pointy bits on the side, you can leave them if you like. I like to hammer just the bottom two, just to leave the top one as a little bit of flourish. Perfect. Just like that. The other thing I like to do is hammer these inside blocks that are the closest to the ceiling. And I like to give them a little edge just like that. I think it looks cool. So the next thing that I would like to do is start filling out this top bit. Because again, our, roof's, our roof <laughs> still seems uh, a little bit on the thin side. So let's fill this out with some color. Uh, and to do that, what I'm going to do is switch over to our gem spark block here. Now I've got this sort of pattern that I like to do, and I use this on most of the wagons that I've built. Uh, basically what I do is I place these gem spark walls with a gap in between them. So you can see that I end up with just these little vertical lines. And when they're the top and bottom and sides of these things are hidden behind like the roof shingles and this boreal wood, it gives a really nice like sort of bar effect. And I really like that. So we're gonna, We'll leave that as our roof for now, but I think it doesn't look so good right now. I'd like to, I'd like to fix that. <laughs> so we're gonna grab some platforms somewhere. There they are. Uh, that's not platforms. What am I talking about? Platforms. Good lord. Brain turned off for a second. You guys know the feeling, I'm sure. Oh, good grief! I cannot control my mouse today. So what we want to do is just lay these platforms inside this gap, all the way across, just like that. Perfect. But the next thing we want to do, of course, we don't want to just leave it like this because it kind of looks like some kind of goofy cotton candy cane thing. I don't know what that is. So it, it just looks goofy. So let's give a little bit of variety to this and start hammering these platforms into like a pattern of some kind. That's usually how I go about this anyway. So for the die trader cart, the pattern that I like is just alternating unhammered platforms and the flat hammered platforms just like this. So it's two clicks, no, three clicks on the plat on each platform to hammer that down. All right, cool. It's a nice little pattern. It doesn't have to look perfect yet. That's fine. Uh, once we start adding paint to this thing is when we're really, really going to start seeing this go wild. And I think, you know what, let's, let's add some paint right now is I want to show you guys how I really do build and this would be the sort of the point where I would start tossing some paint on and getting colors right so I'm gonna take my deep purple paint and paint our roof the darkest deepest most vibrant purple we can get and you can see already that completely changes how that little gap section there with our platforms looks in relation to the rest of the build just that one little bit of paint the next thing I want to do the die trader has sort of a purple and pink aesthetic and so I want to bring that in by taking our deep pink paint, and we're going to actually paint over these gem spark blocks. And there you go. Look at that. That looks way more cohesive to me. And I think that's just what we want. Now, purple and pink are a good color scheme together, but they're pretty close on the color wheel. So what I would like to do is pick a color that's a little ways away from these and just really use that color to bring emphasis to where we want in the build. So for this, I chose deep orange for that. You could do this in other colors. I could see maybe some greens working or I mean, yellow works great, honestly. Like, I mean, either one of those would work just fine with this, but I like orange. I, I think orange is a really cool uh, color to add to this build. So I'm going to use that deep orange paint and paint our Boreal wood that we placed down because kind of doesn't really match up with that dynasty wood but when you paint it deep orange it's pretty close and I think it's close enough so I'm actually gonna paint the dynasty wood deep orange as well it's not a 
a drastic difference, but uh, I think it makes it looks a, it looks a little bit more cohesive, I think. All right, so we got ourselves a nice little start to our wagon here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and get the last of the yellow out of this build by painting our wheel hubs pink as well. Uh, so this is a nice start to an aesthetic. I would like to go ahead and start filling out this actual room. So crystal blocks seem like a good choice for this. And we're gonna go ahead and start laying these down where we want them. And oh, good grief, I put, a, put one down that I didn't mean to behind that tire, but that's okay, nobody will see. Uh, so when I do my rooms, one of the things that I like to do is just horizontal lines of the same material. And you'll kind of see what I mean here in a minute. So I'm gonna I put down two rows of these crystal walls here, crystal block walls. And the next thing that I want to do is to put down one of our colors of blue dynasty wall, or of dynasty wall rather. So I'm gonna start with the blue one. So here I'm just gonna lay down one line of that. Perfect. Now I want to see how that looks with the purple paint, because the interior of this I think is gonna be mostly purple. Uh, since I'd like to use the uh, crystal furniture set. So that looks like an okay, close enough shade of purple to me. So I'm just kind of matching it up with that bottom wall. Is it close enough that it looks good, but doesn't clash or anything like that? It's really important. Uh, let's see, what's next? Let's go ahead and put some white dynasty wall on here. And the nice thing about using both colors of dynasty when you're painting things is that uh, there will be like a little bit of a line, a little bit of a division. You'll see what I mean here in a second uh, as we paint this thing. So I'm going to again take my deep purple paint and you can see of course the blue dynasty wall here on this row is a little bit different. It's darker than uh, the white dynasty wall and that's just what we want. We just want variation in that color uh, in a way that doesn't interrupt the rest of the build and I think that's what we have here. That's why I really like using that horizontal line pattern to decorate and pick out background walls for a room. Uh, it also helps me keep from building my rooms too big, which was always a problem that I had. I would want to build like the biggest castle in the world and then it would just all be made of great brick and it wasn't fun to look at. <laughs> uh, so let's see what's next. Uh, I think this looks okay for now, but what I do like to do is accentuate the top of the room with a different material as well, regardless of how tall the room is. And that just helps give sort of the impression of like, you know, all the little trim and stuff they put around, uh, around your walls and all that stuff. Uh, so that looks good to me. Let's go ahead and paint that with our deep purple paint once again. Looks good. I like it. Uh, and now let's get a little bit of light on the subject. So the way I do my windows, I count two blocks in and then I place glass for three blocks wide and we just fill that up and do that on both sides. So if you need a little bit of help lining this one up, it's gonna be the block that's just above the end of this inside bit of your platform. You trace that up, that's where you want it. Just like that, perfect. All right, so I think we're getting kind of close on this thing. They come together pretty quick. It's one of the reasons I like these things so much. Uh, this is the gist of the build, but I wanna show you a couple more tricks that I really like to use. So the first thing I wanna do here, I think we need a little bit more pink down here. So we have this huge bar of pink at the top of our build, and pink isn't the primary color of this scheme, purple is. So what I would like to do is introduce just a little bit more pink at the bottom of the build to make it not feel so out of place. We have purple all over the place. We've got orange surrounding the walls and ceiling and one on the floor but there's not really a whole lot of pink. We've got the wheel hubs, but it's not a lot. It's two blocks, right? So let's get some pink in this thing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm taking my gem spark wall and I'm just running it right along this floor. And I want every block that this floor is covering to have gem spark behind it, just like that. Now, while we're here, something that I do like to do, uh, and I know there's a, a wall back here that's been bothering me. So I'm gonna take some Boreal wood and just run it along the three blocks that make up the top of the tire. So one there, one there, and one there, just like that. And we're gonna do that on both wheels just to get some symmetry going there. And beautiful, I think that's good to go. I am gonna go ahead and paint those walls black because it's meant to sort of be in the shadows. You can make that line up a little bit better with your color scheme, but black's fine for now. Uh, let's see. So the next thing we wanna do, we have that gem spark down. So what I wanna do is put a little bit of a pattern in this. These two 
<laughs> it's like this crystal block and this boreal they're just sort of sandwiched together for our floor is really uninteresting and i would like to make that more interesting so we have the gem spark back there and if you notice hammering this block on the boreal wood lets just a tiny sliver of that gem spark to peek through and it gives a really fantastic effect in tons and tons of builds to use the edge of a, a border or a background wall that doesn't have a neighbor and that's what we see here there's no background wall behind this boreal wood so the overlapping edges of of that gem spark background wall peek through on a block that they're not actually occupying and that's exactly what we want because it looks super cool let's check this out let's paint this pink and look at that come to life that's so cool like i was so happy to figure that <laughs> that kind of thing out it's such a useful thing to just sneak into your builds here and there paint it whatever color you like and and yeah you can use that trick so often like just hide gem spark everywhere <laughs> that's my motto uh so now that we've got a little bit more down here you can hammer these however you want if you find a pattern of hammering and background walls that look better by all means do it that's that's the whole point of this so i really do like this and i think this looks good for us here in the middle but these little like these little platforms that are meant to be on each side of the train don't really fit the bill they're kind of thin they're just a single block sticking out there's nothing supporting them it doesn't look real so to fix that i'm going to use our crystal platforms again there's probably better platforms for this to be fair uh but i'm just going to put two platforms even with the wheel hub just below our crystal block it doesn't have to go all the way to the edge we don't need it to look perfectly realistic i think kind of the impression here is that this is something under the platform that's holding it up so to kind of line this into the rest of the build and make that clear what i want to do is take our deep orange paint and we're actually going to paint those platforms orange and so it sort of gives this illusion that there's one big orange like chassis or thing underneath this cart uh that makes it look a little bit more believable and and less like oh you built that in a game kind of thing uh so that should do for now and i like the way that this floor looks and this is pretty much it for the floor so let's start working our way from bottom to top the next thing i want to do is really start finishing off these outer platforms because right now they don't look like anything <laughs> it's just a place to stand so maybe there would be like a little guardrail around here so we'll toss some iron fence i think is a good choice uh, you can use whatever you like there. There's tons of different fence options, and at the end of the day, you can paint them however you like. Uh, and yeah, you can get a lot. You can get a lot of mileage out of this build, I think. So the next thing I want to do, I want to go ahead and paint these things to just kind of put them into the background a little bit, so they're not standing at the same level as the rest of the room. We want this to be in the background, but we also want it to still be there and be decorated. So now we have a bit of a problem here. You can see, and I really should zoom in for these. I'll tell you what, future episodes will be, we'll build zoomed in. Uh, apologies for that. Uh, so you can see we have this problem where this block, this background wall that we put behind our tire is peeking out and clipping into our fence. And that doesn't make any sense in, in the context that we're trying to build. So we can do a couple of things. The, the reason that this is a problem is there's no background wall behind the bottom block of each door. There's nothing there to suppress these edges just like there isn't a, a background wall behind these blocks that suppress the edges of the gem spark. So we're seeing the same effect that we're purposely using with the gem spark in a place that we don't actually want to use it or see it here uh, with this wheel well. So what we needed to do to close this border is to put a background wall at the bottom block of the door. So you can do this with fence, but the problem is you're actually going to see through this little tiny gap that you guys can see there. If I move around, you might be able to see how the door almost looks like it's floating now. And that's obviously not what we want. The entirety of the iron fence is hidden behind the door, so that's not gonna work. Uh, so what I'm gonna do instead is use our crystal blocks. And you can see that it doesn't really look that much different in terms of this crystal wall. This side doesn't look like there's less wall than this one, really, if you just kind of glance at it, but uh, it does a really good job of suppressing those walls and connecting those pieces of fence to give that illusion. Uh, so this looks good for me, I think, so far. So let's put this back. And I want to maybe go ahead and toss... Let's go ahead and toss our lighting up. So what I like to do is just use one of the lanterns that are available in tons of different furniture sets. 
uh, use those here just on this last little block to give it a bit of body at the top and make the roof a little bit more interesting and dynamic. It's not just this little rectangle shape. We got some stuff poking out, and that's that's what it all amounts to. It's just stuff poking out and all that. Uh, so I do sometimes hammer these to an angle like this, but I think for this one, I'm just going to leave them square. Uh, it's okay. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you can hammer whatever you like. You can make this look exactly how you want. This this is just sort of a rough guideline that you can use to switch out materials, tinker with how things play with each other and how different materials interact. This is a great, a great template for that. So I think at this point we need to just start decorating and I'm going to be using the crystal furniture set for this. So I'm going to, I usually start these by putting a chandelier in the middle and that sort of sets the tone of like, what is the decoration going to look like? Uh, and yeah, it sort of just gives the start to the aesthetic. And of course, with an aesthetic like this, the crystal furniture set really is the best one that we have. So the next thing here, let's see, let's put a couple workbenches down, and this is where things start getting a little bit more freeform. You can kind of do whatever you want. <laughs> you can decorate these however you like, and I support it. Uh, so a couple little tricks that I want to show you. You can use Gem Spark to give the illusion of sort of like a glowing counter or like table or something like that. Just by tossing a, a block like this above these workbenches. It doesn't work great with all of the workbenches, but these ones are pretty boxy and they really do fill up their the tiles they occupy. Uh, so this is a pretty convincing illusion when you paint it into uh, the color that suits the build. As you can see here, it kind of gives this illusion that it's like some kind of glowing futuristic counter or something uh, of that nature. So it works for me. What else we got? We got some banners up here. There's probably other ones, but I grabbed what are these things? Green sucklers. <laughs> I grabbed those just because they had the colors that I liked. And typically your decorations are really where you're going to start pulling in your color scheme and paying attention to how you're using the colors that are in your build. Uh, it's fair to say that maybe this pink is too much. Maybe you don't like that pink being there. Maybe you still like the glowing effect and you would rather it be painted purple or something like that. You can do that. Uh, in this case, I would probably go ahead and also paint the platforms above it to match it in there or something like that. I don't know. I like it in pink, but it's always up to you how you go about doing these things. So go ahead and take the paint off of these things. You're allowed to change your mind. That is perfectly allowed. All right, there we go. Let's toss a few more things here. Bookshelves make great space fillers. I can say with certainty they're huge. They're like what are they, four by three, I think. Yeah. Four blocks by three blocks. They're huge. They fill up a lot of space. They're interesting to look at. I even had somebody on Reddit uh, PM me asking how I was able to put shelves on a platform, or how I was able to put block. You remember one of those days? <laughs> I had somebody on Reddit message me asking how I was able to place books on a platform like this. And what they didn't realize was that it was just a bookshelf they were looking at. So if you're sneaky with how you put these things together, you can get a lot of mileage out of this stuff. So what else do we have? I would like to fit that dive vat in there, but we kind of left ourselves without a lot of room because the dive vat is three tiles wide. So it's not going to fit anywhere that we have left. So what I'm going to do now, let's go ahead and pick up this workbench in one of these platforms. We're just going to scooch this whole thing over. I guess we need to pick up the other one too. All right, so there we go. Okay, let's go ahead and paint that background wall now. Deep pink beauty. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so now I'm going to take this chest and move it over here. And then I'm going to take my dive vat, toss that there. Now the dive vat, in my opinion, sticks out like a sore thumb. This is like <laughs> this like just standard brown wood doesn't really fit this aesthetic very well. So there's a couple of things that you can do, and I want to show you this trick so that you can be on the lookout for opportunities to use it. So I normally do this build with purple and deep purple paint for this trick. And what I do is I start with the regular purple paint, and I'm going to paint the tiles that make up the brighter side of this. So you can see this side's kind of in shadow and this side's in the highlight. I'm going to use the regular paint on the highlights. Then, once we've painted that as we have, we're going to switch to the deep purple paint and paint this bit here, along with that one. Yep, 
Okay, so this gives a nice sort of like cut illusion of like a really like harsh shadow. I really, really, really like that. Uh, so yeah, that is gonna work for me on that one. What else, what other space do we have to fill? Let's go ahead and toss a chair in there. Of course, if you do want an NPC to live in this while you're decorating, make sure you got a flat surface and a chair and a light source in here somewhere. Uh, so we'll put the chair down so that we can move uh, one of our NPCs in once we're done. What other sorts of things can we do here? Uh, something that not a lot of people are apparently aware of is that placing bottles like this, they can be painted. Uh, and this is kind of a really, really cool thing that every time I post on Reddit, I always get somebody that's like, whoa, I didn't know you could paint bottles. <laughs> yeah, you sure can. Uh, so typically these look, in my opinion, these look better with deep paint. Uh, as you can see, let's, let's actually do a quick comparison. So deep lime versus lime. Uh, I guess we could do it side by side, but you guys can kind of see that already. Uh, so yeah, you can see if you're going for a more like realistic build, if you're the type of person who likes building in like grayscale and brown scale and uh, uses a lot of like natural sort of builds, you might consider using the regular paint for these, but you just have to make a call uh, when you're doing it. Personally, I like the vibrance. I'm all for super bright color and yeah, I think that's very, very cool. I'm gonna mix it up though here. And we'll actually, let's use some of the colors that we've already got. A little pink, a little orange, looks good to me. Maybe toss some books up here and you can sort of back those in and out of the square to find the books that you like the best. I like this one. Uh, and you can paint these too. Let's take our lime paint out of the trash and just go ahead and, oop, there we go. A little bit of lime paint on that guy. I like it. Uh, let's toss maybe a couple more books here. Let's, where's the leaning one? There it is, I like that one. All right, so we've got that one, actually. Oh, no, no. Oh, good grief. There we go. Let's try this again. So let's toss a couple books on here like that. That's what I wanted to see. Okay. Perfect, perfect. Let's toss maybe a couple torches over here. Yeah, why not? Uh, what else can we add? Well, I don't know. I mean, do we need to add anything more? It's always kind of the tough thing with with Terraria builds. I think this looks good. I, I think we can call it here. Uh, <laughs> I think it's important to know when to just call a build good enough, and I think this looks pretty good. So the one thing I did want to show you before we wrap things up for today is just what you can do with this, this formula, um, this little template that we put together. Uh, and I wanted to show you some of the other NPCs that I've built these wagons for. So this one here is the Cyborg. Uh, very cool stuff. It's got, of course, that bright cyan color that you see on the Cyborg himself. Uh, along with highlights of like red with black as sort of the overall primary color. Uh, I really like this one, lots of detail. I'm very, very proud of this cart. I think this one turned out better than the rest. Uh, well, all but one. I think this is my second favorite cart actually, and you'll see the one right now that I really like, and that's the Demolitionist cart. This is the one that we just built, of course. This is the one that started it all. Uh, but I love the Demolitionist cart. I think this one turned out super cool. I'm very, very happy with this design. Uh, this color scheme, it's simple, it's not particularly confusing, I don't think. There's not a lot of like weird tricks with it. It's just a nice looking build and a really cool color scheme that I don't use a lot, so that was another exciting thing for me. Uh, so there's our demolitionist cart, we have our mechanics cart here. Uh, we have our mechanic sitting, uh, mechanic and the cat, sitting in the witch doctor's cart. This was the second one I ever built and I think I'm gonna go back and redo this one because I don't like basically all of this nonsense. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'll probably end up redoing that one at some point. We've got our Dryad cart here, which I'm very, very happy with. I really, really like this one too. So I think this is about where I want to call it. Uh, is there anything else that I would like to add? Yeah, there. these walls are looking a little thin. So the last thing I would like to do, oh goodness, I don't want them that thick. Okay. So the last thing I want to do now is sort of look at, where are my crystal blocks? Oh, if I could just, oh, there they are. If I could not lose my materials, I'd be impressed. Uh, so the next thing I want to do, and I think the thing that's going to wrap it up, we talked about how leaving thin walls isn't usually a good thing. It makes it look sort of cheap or fake or it just doesn't look like a real building and you want to thicken those up and give some more uh, detail to them. 
What I'd like to do is put just a little bit of detail on our walls to thicken those up. So let's start with a couple blocks here. And I have a recipe for how I normally do this, but I'm gonna try not to follow it here uh, and see if we can get something just a little bit different. Maybe we can hammer those like that. Let's get one more here. And of course, it's gonna unhammer all my stuff. There we go. <laughs> okay, so let's maybe, yeah, maybe do something like that. That's a look. And then maybe we'll just one last time make a little bit of use of our little overflowing walls trick just like that. And toss, what could it be? Let's do pink. Yeah. Uh, let's toss a bit of pink on those walls and there you go. That's going to do it for our first little build here together. So uh, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I've been asked to do build tutorials in the past and... I've always been kind of hesitant just because I feel like I'll run out of ideas and like little tips and tricks to help you guys. I just feel like I'm going to run out of those really quick. So uh, yeah, hopefully this is a better way to sort of show you guys how I build and some of the things that I do that make my builds look the way that they do. So uh, if you enjoyed it, leave me a comment, like on the video, subscribe if you haven't, all that good stuff. Uh, and yeah, for now, I want to thank you all for watching and we'll see you all next time.